Encounters improve the quality of our lives. Encounters come to reveal to us the futility of life without God. Encounters will activate purpose and calling in our life. Encounters come to restore intimacy and fellowship. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Encounters come to restore intimacy. Encounters come to reveal to us the futility of life. If you don't have a relationship with God, anything of value can become God to you. Welcome to Encounter Jesus Ministries, sustaining an experiential knowledge of God and walking in the fullness of our eternal ordination. Now, listen to God's servant, Apostle Oropo Michael, as he takes us through an encounter with the Word. From verse 11, when Jesus resurrected from the dead, the Bible said he gave gifts to men. And he said to some, he gave to be apostles. To some, he gave to be prophets. To some, he gave to be evangelists. To some, he gave to be pastors and teachers. And he said, for the perfecting. The word perfecting is a word catechismus. It means to equip for the equipping of the saints and he said for the work of the ministry the saints need to be empowered to do that which Jesus would have been doing if he was on the face of the earth and so what it goes to mean is that if the church is adequately and effectively functional everyone will become like Christ with the capacity to do what Jesus would have been doing if he were on the face of the earth. And I said, the reason is because Jesus is the pattern man. God attempted to create man and there was a standard he had in mind when he wanted to create man. If you study the book of Genesis chapter 1, you will discover there were four Credential, five credentials God had in mind for every man to possess. The first credential that God intended for every man to experientially mirror was his glory. He said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image. The image of God is the glory of God. So the man God intended to create was a man that walked in the fullness of the glory of God. And secondly, he said, in our likeness. So the second credential God had in mind was for man to have the capacity to express his essential attributes. So all that God would do, the man will have the ability to do. And thirdly, in Genesis, chapter 1 or chapter 3 rather from verse 8 we saw that in the cool of the day the voice of God came walking in the garden into verse 9 so God intended for the man to live perpetually in his presence intimacy so deep that when the man steps out he will not just be the expression of the glory of God but he will carry God's government like a radar so wherever the man showed up, the government of God, which is God's presence, we follow him. You know, in Luke 5.17, he said, Jesus was teaching and the power of God was present to heal. The government of God comes to correct environmental influences and cause them to align with God. So God wanted man to have intimacy with him to the degree that he becomes a carrier of not just his glory, but his government. Number four, what God wanted to do was to give the man authority over the visible realm. 
And so Genesis 1 28, it said, let them have dominion over the birds of the air, over the fish in the water, and everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth. And number five, in Genesis 2 9, it said, God planted the tree of life in the garden. So God wanted the man not to live by the animal life, not to live by the soulish life. The reason is because man is capable to function by two order of life apart from God. It's called the animal life and the soulish life. Because in Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11, it said the life of the flesh is in the blood. So there is a life in the flesh of the man. And in Genesis 2 7, it said God breathed the breath of life into his nostril and he became a living soul. So there is a life in the soul of the man. It's possible for the man to function with the life of the blood and the life of the soul and have no relationship with God. Because Adam never ate of the tree of life. Everybody walking on the earth today without Jesus is living by the animal life and the soulish life. But the plan God had was for the man to live by the Zoe life, not by the animal life, not by the soulish life. If man was able to receive of that life, he would have had the five credentials of being the man of God. Unfortunately, he didn't attain those credentials. He was driven from the garden. He fell, and the Bible said he fell from the glory of God. Jesus came and said, you are of your father, the devil, the loss of your father shall ye do. So he lost the glory, he lost the likeness, he lost the authority, he lost intimacy, and he lost life. The only being in the form of man that walked experientially in this five order was Jesus Christ. And this is why Jesus is the pattern man. So in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13, Paul teaching said, the goal of spiritual growth and development, Ephesians 4.13, the goal of spiritual growth and development was to come to the knowledge of the truth. Unto a perfect man, that's a mature man, unto the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. So what Paul is talking about is because Jesus had mirrored this five order, every man should also walk in this order. But you don't just wish it. You don't wish to be like Jesus and become like Jesus. You have to grow into the fullness of the Christ. And the way to grow into the fullness of the Christ, Paul still graciously made it available to us. In 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, he said, we all with open faces, beholding as in a glass, the image of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, we are changed into that image. So the only way you can be changed into the likeness of the Christ is when you behold Christ. Is when you see Christ. Is when you look upon Christ. Your resolution cannot make you become like that. Your discipline cannot make you become like that. Because the fall is a product of dematuration. You have taken upon yourself the nature of the devil. So when Jesus is preached, and Jesus is taught, then people can look at him and they become like him. So in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 23, he say we preach Christ and him crucified. We preach Christ and him crucified. The goal is to present Jesus. In Galatians chapter 3 from verse 1, he said, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before whom Christ was evidently made manifest. So Paul's teaching, the summary, of Paul's teaching, the technocracy and the skill, the gift and the anointing that made for Paul's teaching was his ability to expose Christ. So much so that anybody that sees him or hears him will see Jesus painted to him. And as the person begins to look at Jesus, the protocol of transformation is engaged. We all with open faces, beholding as in the glass, the image of the Lord, we are changed. If you were blessed by this message you just listened to and you wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat the prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son Jesus Christ and that He died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. 
I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said this prayer, please send us an email at info.ejmi.ng at gmail.com or visit us on our website at www.encounterjesus.cc to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege of discipling you. God bless you.